watching at that point, so it doesn't bother me. I mean, at that point, you're probably just doing bets on, like, who's going to come in, like, second to last, right? right? That's, like, maybe the most risky, like, I don't know, Who's going to DNF? Who's right. going to crash? Right, right, uh-huh. right. Um, Betting on people's lives. Yeah, that sounds yeah. fucking <laughs> awesome. <laughs> Anyways, Nick, put it like that. Uh, Nick, what comics did you read? <laughs> yeah, so, thank goodness I got into some comics as well. I, uh... I uh, sat down and I read Phantom Road 1 through 9. <laughs> nice. Wow. Um, this is written by Jeff Lemire, art by Gabriel H. Walta, colors by Jordi Belair, letters by Steve Wands. Uh, yeah, I, I actually did it, you know, for, for a while there, every other month, I would basically come back to Phantom Road and I would just be like, I don't remember any of these characters. I don't remember their names. I don't uh-huh. remember the mechanics of how this universe works. I don't understand any of this. I've retained none of it. And I'd walk away and say, I don't want to deal with this, man. I'll come back in two months and, mm-hmm, and expect mm-hmm. something different. Um, so I finally sat down on Friday and I read all of the issues that are out to this point. Um, and you know what? F- full credit to Jeff Lemire. Uh, this book is absolutely understandable if you sit down and you don't take off two months between revisiting it. <laughs> oh, um, okay. Nice. It, 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 the book has weird things going on. There definitely are some deeper mysteries afoot, but like Lemire is totally taking his time to build this out. But in terms of the plot and the characters that are presented to us, it's really not that convoluted at all. Mm-hmm. Um. So, you know, put put another check on the, the your bingo card of maybe not all books should be serialized. Maybe we maybe some things should just be strictly volumes. Um, is it the most like hooky read? Like, do you finish every issue and you're super eager for the next? I, I, I don't know if I'd say it's that, but is it definitely like flowy and readable? hundred mm-hmm. percent. Um, I'm not really sure how much I can or could or should say about just what the book is about i think a lot of that's because we really still don't know yet sure but i also really don't want to divulge too much because i think everything should be a mystery i know we use this a lot with paul and i try not to Mm -hmm. abuse it but honestly there are some real weird you know twin peaks-esque trappings here that i think you'd probably dig okay um which isn't surprising. It's it's Lemire. Twin <laughs> Peaks seems to find his way into almost anything and everything he does if given the opportunity. Right. Yeah. Yeah. But it is it is kind of like you know I could, I feel like we can safely talk about kind of like mostly what's happening at least in the first issue, right? Because I feel yeah. like Phantom Road is sure. a a kind of questionable like what the hell is going on here story about a, a trucker and another woman right. and they somehow end up in this. I don't know, shadow universe on top of our own universe where there's these weird faceless monsters, things that are absolutely terrifying. And yeah. they're trying to figure out what the hell is going on. And I think in subsequent issues, they continue to try to figure out what is going on without much success. <laughs> like, <laughs> right. That's the safest way to describe this book. <laughs> and that's the funny thing. Cause it's like, most of the time you'd be like, well, this is what I can share, but I don't want to spoil the rest. And with this book, it's like nine issues in, this is all I can say for sure. I can't speak to anything else. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Right. Um, and, but 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 nine issues later though you're still interested and hooked on the series right and maybe yeah. this comes with like you know us because i'm in the same boat i think i finished i last i read was issue seven like we have this kind of trust with jeff lemire that he's going to do something that's going to be interesting by the end right so we're giving a lot of like chances and in, in, in a lot of like uh i don't know we're giving him a lot of like uh, slack on saying, well, I don't really understand all of this, but I feel right. like it might pay off, right? Right. And of course, he's, you know, paid his dues with Image to the point where he can get away with more or less just right. letting it turn into whatever it needs to turn into. And mm-hmm. I think what threw me, and I guess this is like the one tip I would give for for other readers who maybe haven't started or, or haven't gotten this far, but like, there's a point where you sort of shift perspective from the the truck driver and his um, uh, partner to this FBI agent that's sort of investigating, um, uh, more or less, you know, investigating the, the the two of them and these weird creatures that are showing up, you know, dead alongside the highway. And when that character gets introduced, a whole cycle of characters that surround that FBI agent also get introduced. 
And if you don't really start paying attention to that circle of individuals, like forgetting all of them and, and sort of they can really complicate things if you if you don't stay on top of that. So that was yeah. kind of the the point for me where coming back every other month just became kind of insurmountable. Um, sure. Yeah. Paul Paul G in the chat is saying that Lemire has said that Phantom Road is something like 50 issues. <laughs> so, <laughs> um, sure. Sure. I, I, but but honestly, it's. It's it's beautiful. It's weird, mm-hmm. much like most Lemire works. Um, it does. It's pretty sa- sad, and you've got you know fleshed out characters, but they're fleshed out in terms of how much trauma they've experienced. Mm-hmm. Um, which which is a a good segue, uh, to to point out that this book does involve you know such mature themes as drug abuse or addiction, mm-hmm. uh, dealing with the loss of a child. Um, these aren't like ever present in your face kind of like HBO season one syndrome where it's like, we're mature and we demand to be taken seriously. And here are the tough things we're going to tackle. Mm-hmm. Um, <laughs> some of these are more just hovering in the background, but they are there. And I do want to warn readers. And I think most readers who have read Lemire understand that he's not afraid to tackle these subjects and they do come up, um, but they are handled pretty respectfully. So it, it, it is worth pointing out that some of that stuff is also in this work. So, um, hmm, yeah, you know, just be aware. I'm, I'm well, curious. I get, I go back and forth on Jeff Lemire stuff. Like some of it I like, some of it doesn't work for me, but I like Walter's art enough to give this a shot. Yeah. Um, mm-hmm. and I'm also, I just recently started my annual Twin Peaks rewatch. So I'm in that mindset already. So maybe okay. a nice yeah. uh, connection. It, it definitely has that Twin Peaks feel of stuff that's weird that just doesn't feel obligated to explain itself <laughs> which that's my i feel like part. modern yeah, that's <laughs> it's, it's the best right it's the best and i feel like modern comics especially where it's like you have one issue maybe three issues explain everything or you're a failure mm-hmm. um yeah. right that mindset uh just seems pervasive and so things that are like yeah I'm not going to explain this. Uh, do, do I know where this is going? I mean, maybe, but <laughs> I, I, I'm not obligated to divulge that to you. Right. Um, yeah, yeah. Huh. Interesting. Well, Nick, we'll compare notes. When when you finally get around to watching Twin Peaks season three, we'll have we'll pick this conversation back up because. <laughs> yeah, I, I mean, I, I I might as well now now that is it on Paramount? Paramount Plus merged with merged with oh yeah Showtime and yeah. um there you go you know they keep trying to upsell me. So now's the time. Um, now's the time. Yeah, <laughs> exactly. But a uh, beautiful book. And the other really bizarre thing, and maybe it's deliberate, is um, I was so certain based on the color work for the book that Walta had colored this book himself mm-hmm, mm-hmm. because it <laughs> really looks like Walta colors. And then lo and behold, actually, it's Jordi Belair. Um, that was kind of a shock. It really <laughs> looked like Walter colored this book himself. So interesting. Um, Jordi Blair can do it all. I think that's, yeah. that's what we're that's, saying here, right? Yeah, yeah absolutely. Yeah. She's she's incredible. There's amazing. something so cool as well, Mike. I don't know if you've noticed this, and I just want to say this: the flashbacks. Like there are so many like tropey traditional like flashbacks. Like let's set it in sepia tone. Let's right, put right, it in right. black and white. And instead, with this book, it's just a faintly lighter shade of the normal tones Mm -hmm, like everything is just a little bit softer a little bit fainter um it doesn't like i said it doesn't flip into like black and white or something like that and it's just it's so subtle and effective um i don't know i i really like it it's it's a really cool touch um, yeah, it, it's one of those things where I feel like if you read the physical book in the wrong lighting, you wouldn't realize it was a flashback. <laughs> oh, yeah. no, that is kind of. Yeah, <laughs> yeah exactly. That's, that's maybe the only problem with it. But reading it digitally, it's 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 clear, but it is extremely subtle. I, I do appreciate that.